year. Will you be able to help save a life? What you're about to see is not a recreation. It's the reality of heart failure in America. Every day in Houston, 911 gets three to four calls for cardiac arrest emergencies. Okay, what I want you to do, I want you to take the heel of your hand and put it in the center of the, uh, of the gentleman's chest, okay? Right between the nipples. Someone has to start CPR within the first four minutes. Put one hand on top of the other hand. Electrical shock has to be done within the next three or four minutes. The ambulance is coming. The ambulance is coming, okay? Just continue doing the CPR, okay? If you go beyond either of those two time limits, the chances of survival fall dramatically. They're there? Okay. All right, then. Bye-bye. Dr. Paul Pepe is Director of Emergency Medical Services for the City of Houston. A hands-on supervisor in the 911 centers, the field, and trauma centers. MD-1 to Ambulance 58, uh, what's your exact location right now? 545. Even in the best of systems, the fastest you can get anybody to you is about three and a half to four minutes from the time of a collapse. Houston Fire and Ambulance, what's your emergency? Yes, need an ambulance. The lady across the street is, is in the, uh, there's a gentleman in the car, he's having a heart attack. Uh, how old is he? I had the faintest idea. I was walking out the door. The lady said to call 911. You don't know whether he's breathing or not. No, I do not know. 51, I'm going with 33. When Dr. Pepe arrives at the scene, three cardiac arrest teams are working on 49-year-old Walter McLeod in his front yard. He basically had a sudden short-circuiting of the electrical system in his heart. He had sudden death. He keeled over. Whoa, 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 Go to the CPR. Pick up pulse or whatever he pulses. That's fine. I mean, when he punches, right? Yeah, well, whatever, no, I mean, whatever, whatever he kicks up. That's fine. Let's Where's my Abby? Abby or Astro? If we can get the raid up, we'll be in good shape. Where's Astro? You want Astro in there? I want Astro. I want Astro. Astro, get the Abby out. All right. You're doing good. Let's go. Don't lose that line. And then squeeze the bag in, try and lift the arm up in the air. Okay. You got it? Here's some things, Tim. Tap on seven, show Epi on board, one milligram. Okay, 927. Don't lose the line, lift the arm up in the air, squeeze the bag in, run it for 30 seconds. Now get it. Okay. Is it running good? Okay, stop CPR and stop bagging. Okay. Stop bagging. Okay. Go ahead. You got pulses now? Yeah. Good. Okay, keep doing the CPR unless you get a strong radio. He just slumped over in the car. We got him out and gave him CPR. And that was it. Is he breathing? How are you doing now, Dale? I got a radio. Okay, good. Little package. Okay, we got him. Okay, start getting the blood pressure. Okay. Start to take a breath. Yeah, there he's going now. He's taking off. Okay, good. He collapsed over. His friend did CPR immediately. Hang on, baby. Breathe. Yeah. Oh, breathe him over. Breathe him over. And basically bought the paramedics the three or four minutes they needed to get there. And when they arrived, took one shock and they had brought him back to life. What's yeah, that, sir? Okay, give me some oxygen. He's, he's awake. Ooh. You got to be confused or something to do that. Yeah, his pulse rate's up, too. Uh, be advised, we're going to be coming in. Once Walter's condition is stabilized, he is taken to Ben Taub Trauma Center. Now, you having any chest pain now? Can you hear me? What do y'all want to come over to the... Inside the shock room, an EKG of the heart is taken to find the source of the problem. It looks like he's having a heart attack in the bottom part of his heart. We can actually probably have things under control at this point. As you can see, he's talking to you. Here's a man that well, half an hour ago was was dead. It was the end of his life, and he's not with us. Paramedic Charles Martin brings Walter's friend, Ethel Key Kendall, up to date on his condition. We got him back. It's going to be a little while. Pastor here is going to be with you to answer some questions. But, you know, things are looking good, but I'm not going to give you no false hopes. They'll, it's going to take some time, okay? And uh, appreciate the information, and I want you to take care of yourself, all right? 
Uh, Thank take you care. so much. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Three years ago, his chances of surviving this event would be nil because we didn't have the communication system in place. We didn't have the priority dispatching in place. We didn't have the whole team effort that we have now. It's a treatable disease process. If you get there in time before the brain is damaged, if you can deliver the, the therapy, the intervention rapidly, you can make a big difference. Another call for a cardiac arrest. When paramedics arrive, they discover the man has gone into cardiac arrest as a result of a stab wound under his left arm. Did you get him intubated yet? Yeah, he's intubated. Okay. He's not on the board. The man has lost so much blood from the wound, his only hope is to get to the hospital and into surgery as quickly as possible. No, it's one over there. No, that's mine. Okay, Grant, hold up. Got it? All right, right down. This is the only wound we have. Inside the ambulance, they continue to work on it. Spin top. Now let's go! We're in route code three. Yeah, CPR is in progress. We do. Yes, yeah, CPR is in progress. Don't have the trauma team sound. We got possible sore codification. All right, here they come. Watch your backs, everybody. Here they come. When they arrive at Ben Town, the patient has no real pulse, respiration, or blood pressure. They have not given up. But time is running out. Turn the lights on, please. Okay, give me a second, Jack. Pass me that line. More. Yeah. What do you cut it? No, pull it back. Yeah. Charles, you got nothing here, guys. No contractions at all. No contractions. What do his pupils look like? They're about right. four, no reaction, five, no reaction. We're going to get it. Don't get it. 10.40. At 10.40 p.m., he's pronounced dead. It's, it's hard, you know, it's, uh, we'll probably think about this again tomorrow or tonight, and uh, he, he was a young man in his 30s, and, uh, you know, he may have been deprived of 50 years of life, you know, and it's something that we'll, we'll never know, you know, we'll never know now what, what, what could have been. All we know is we did our best. If you take a fatalistic view when people have a lethal injury, we figure we basically lost the, the case to begin with, but now as many as one out of ten of those people who are essentially not breathing, not pulsing, end of their life, have been brought back to living because of the system of care we set up here. Two weeks later, Walter McLeod is ready to go home. You take one tablet by mouth every morning, okay? I don't remember anything. As if somebody had took a baseball bat and just knocked me out. It was just a black, dark world to me. Later. Okay. Take care. Okay. Y'all be good. Bye now. After I came home, I could see where the grass had been trampled down where I was in the front yard. They brought me back to life, and I'm thankful to them and to my very dear friend, Ms. Ethel. She tried to bring me back herself out there. They told me that I did all the right things, and if I had been two minutes later, that Walter would not have survived. As they say, if you can learn to jumpstart your car, you can learn to jumpstart a life. And she jumpstarted my life all over. Three quarters of the cardiac arrest occur in the home, in areas where you're around friends or someone you know or love. And so we encourage that everybody learn CPR, essentially, because that's part of the system. The system is not just ambulances. The system is not just paramedics, doctors, and hospital. It is the community when it comes to heart disease.
just happy that he survived. Oh, yes, because he was a goner. She sure. was gone. That's for sure. He died a couple of times on us, but he's back. He's with us. <laughs> if you are interested in learning CPR, contact the nearest chapter of the American Red Cross.